Lauren, let's start with your vote for the winner. Why did you give it to Jam Jam? Jam Jam had the, I feel like the best social game. He was so genuine and I, they didn't show a lot of our relationship there, but Jam Jam was the most social and I feel like he played um, or he had the best dream management. And even you see him like just such a, a great human being when he was with Carson, showing him how to make fire and just like relating to us on a personal level. So I feel like he had the best social game of the three. Um, with Heidi, I didn't have as great of a um, connection with her. She was friends with, with Danny, and Danny was gunning for me the whole time. <laughs> we we had some tension there. And then um, with Carolyn, Carolyn, I felt like she played a great game strategically, but behind the scenes. And we didn't really know or see that because we didn't have uh, any relationships with her, or I didn't have as much of a, of a relationship with her. So that's why I went with Jam Jam. Uh, you know, uh, we heard from Carson in the show that you know you were a big threat if if they kept you around. So I'm sure you've kind of thought about this. If if you make it to the final three, how do you think you do against some of those other folks? Yeah, you know what? I think if I if I would have had that idol right, and I would have I would have made it to the final four, and then won in fire or or got pushed to the end, I think I would have had a fighting chance. The only person I really think that I would not have been able to beat was Carson. Um, I feel like I had a lot of friends on the jury. So <clears throat> I had Brandon, Kane, Jamie, and then even like I formed a relationship with Danny. And then I, I probably would have struggled kind of pulling in Franny um, and, and Matt. But I think that um, I had a lot of alliances there. So I think that um, that would have helped me a lot at the end. So you mentioned the idol. We saw you searching for the idol on that on that beach. You know, we never know how long you're actually out there and what's going on. So tell us about that idol hunt and how long you were kind of looking for it and how frustrating it was not finding it. Yeah. So there was a point you hear Carson say, like, I've never seen anybody just give up. Right. So there was a point where I was like defeated. I pulled out my let my letters back out. I was reading them. I was crying, exhausted, exhausted. My eyes were puffy. And I was like, man, like, I'm going to lose. <laughs> and then there was a moment and they didn't show it. But I was just like, I'm going, look, I'm going to find it. So I went out what feels like an eternity, maybe like 30, 35 minutes where I was like searching through the trees and looking through those rocks on the side, like just for anything at that point. And there was like this one tree. Now in the show, it's, it looked like a little twig tree or something on the side. But in the on the island, there was this one big tree that was like very unique and very different than anything else. So that's the one that I stayed at for the majority of the time. But I could have never found that freaking idol. Like it was like a needle in the haystack. Did you see it? Like it was like hanging <laughs> off of a twig or a branch. <laughs> so that was it was very very hard to find but i was determined to go get it and i i tried but unfortunately um we said we saw how it turned out <laughs> the survivors as a game as experience is filled with like a lot of big highs and a lot of low lows i, I assume that the highs for you were winning those immunity challenge uh, what was the lowest point of the game for you um the lowest point of the game for me was just like after the family visit, um, or, or maybe even like right before ish, I guess that was a high and a low because you get these letters and you're like, oh my gosh, my family, I love them so much. Like they're pushing me forward. But then also I'm at a low because I'm like, oh my God, my kids, like, what are they doing? Where are they at? And for me, I tried to be, as you could see, like very stoic and just very like strong. And I didn't want to think about um, my kids or my family because it it brought me like made me cry, made me feel a little vulnerable. And I didn't really want people to see too much of that. So that was like the lowest point for me, just like when I really had the moment to think about my family, think about my kids and know like they're dependent on me right now. You know, like like this, it was heavy. So it was a great moment knowing that I was doing something grand, but it was just heavy on me. That kind of like distracted me in a way in the game. I've always wondered about that, Lauren. I always thought like, I, you know, if I were out there, which I would never do, by the way, but how I would just have to shut myself off from that personal side of my family and not think about them. So that then to have that reintroduced could be really jarring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was very, it was very hard to shut it off because like when you're in the moment and you're thinking about it, you, you dwell on it, you know, and you're crying and you're like exhausted and it, it shows a, some vulnerability and you can connect with people in that way. 
but it's just hard. It's hard and, and you have to be able to balance that. You know, you talk both on the show and, and in a deleted scene we had on EW.com about the sort of the lessons you had learned out there on the island in terms of being a single mom and how it was okay to ask for help and not always feel like you need to do it on your own. It's been almost a year now since you got back. Has there been a change in your life in terms of that since Survivor? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So I, before going out there, man, I was just so independent. I'm like, I can do everything. I'm going to prove to everybody in this world and my ex-husband that I can do it, you know? Um, I know. <laughs> so, so um, but then I realized, you know, like I need support. I need help. Even like not even just with my family, but even at work and it, in every aspect, I always like ask for help now. I always speak to other people and just like, it takes a community, you know, it, it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a community just to be successful, you know, and, and reach your goals. So definitely has changed. I have so many more friends. I have so many more people that I realize that um, are very supportive of me that, and they love me. And it's just, life is better this way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it like? Uh, what was it like when you got to Ponderosa after being voted out? Tell me about that experience. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest with you. Hit me. I I was pissed. I was pissed at Carson. Okay, <laughs> because I thought Carson and I were cool. I was like, man, like Carson is like one of the closest people to me here, and so I I had a really hard time understanding why he would vote me out at that point you know so I really struggled with that getting back like why would Carson vote me out why would he do this am I gonna vote for him when he gets to the end <laughs> like so I struggled I, that's the biggest thing that I struggled with just like being like why why so what was it like when he then showed up right after you I was pissed <laughs> <laughs> I was pissed, but I wanted answers. And then I got to, you know, talk to him. Then we found out like how how intelligent he really was, you know, like he was an aerospace engineering student and all of that. Like, so it all made sense, you know, but um, I was very upset <laughs> when he arrived. <laughs> I, listen, I love it. Listen, I love playing with passion and, and having <laughs> hearing that passion through that until you get your answers. I love it. Uh, last thing for you, uh, Laura, before I let you go, what's What's something else I always like to know because there's so much that doesn't make it into the episode, and especially there were a lot of big characters this season, you know, on the screen a lot. So I'm yeah. sure there's a lot with you that maybe didn't make it to screen. What's something that happened out there that never made it to, to TV that you wish we'd had a chance to see? You know, I really just wish we would have seen more of um, my relationships that I had um, in general, you know, relationships with Carson that I feel like I played very closely with him um, and Jam Jam. So just seeing those relationships to kind of like, I guess, from my perspective, you know, but to be fair, like, man, like we had some great storytellers like Carolyn, Jam Jam, the Tika Three, like they were amazing. And just seeing um, the game through their eyes and their perspective was phenomenal. I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. So it's been great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.